Hey guys, it's Jake. This video is all about continuous glucose monitors or CGMs and this is a subject that I'm just super excited about because CGMs make such a huge difference. A study published recently showed that people who use CGMs versus people who don't have a A1C that's 0.5% lower. And it's something that for me has just made such a huge difference. For anybody who's watching who doesn't know what a CGM is, you know, here's an example. This is the Dexcom G6. It's something that is worn on the arm or in the stomach. Most CGMs work by having a, a wire under the skin. And what it does is it reads your blood sugar every five minutes. And that's just so impactful because not only does it show you what your blood sugar is all the time, it also provides huge insights into trends. So like you can see if your blood sugar is always rising after breakfast or always going low at certain points in the night and you can address your treatments accordingly. And CGMs have just improved by leaps and bounds over the last couple of years. So to give you guys some reference, the first commercially available CGM was the uh, Minimed Guardian Real Time and it only had a life of three days. Last year in 2018, uh, there was a CGM that was approved for three months. And now I know that that's not a direct comparison because the Eversense uses such a different method. And we'll cover that later. But it really just goes to show how drastically the CGMs have improved. And I'm excited to say that that, that innovation is going to just keep on improving. 2020 is going to be a huge year in sensors. And I wanted to go over all the major developments. So there are four big players in the CGM market. There's Abbott with the Freestyle Libre system. There's Dexcom. There is Minimed with the Guardian. And there is Sensionix with the Eversense system. And all four players are going to be making moves in 2020. So let's start out with the first one. Let's do Abbott. Uh, Abbott is going to be releasing the Freestyle Libre 2. So we know from the transcript from their last earnings call that they're growing a little impatient with the release of the Freestyle Libre 2 in the U.S. And I guess they just have a few more hurdles to clear with the FDA. Now they haven't said what those hurdles are or given a definitive timeline, but considering that it was released in Europe over a year ago, I think it's pretty safe to assume that it's going to be coming out sometime in 2020. So the Libre 2 is really similar to the Libre 1. Uh, it's same size, same look, same everything. It just adds one big advantage and that's that it has Bluetooth and it can give alerts when a user is high or low. Now you still scan the receiver with your phone or with the reader to, to get your actual blood sugar. It'll just buzz you and say, hey, your blood sugar is low, scan. It's not like the Dexcom or the Minimed or the Sensionix where it'll actually tell you what your blood sugar is. At least not out of the box. See, here's the crazy thing is that if you read the documents from the Android APS or Artificial Pancreas System, it's basically Android's version of Loop, it says that you can use the Libre 2 as a continuous glucose monitor. You just need to use a patched version of the app. And this is just insane to me. Like this is would be such a huge advantage. This would turn the Libre into just a full-blown CGM. There's been so much demand for this that there's been devices like Meow Meow Made that people will actually buy and place over their sensor and it turns it into the CGM. The fact that it's able to do this out of the box and that Abbott just handcuffs it just boggles my mind. It doesn't make any sense to me. Now I do have a couple of ideas of why this might be the case. You know, the Libre is different in that it reads blood sugar every one minute instead of every five minutes. So maybe getting FDA approval for that would just be so much harder. My other theory, and you know, it's, these aren't exclusive, it could be both, is I think that just, the Libre system is just so synonymous with scanning that they don't want to lose that and lose the recognition. They don't want people to not see other people scanning and other diabetics being like, hey man, what'd you just do? How, how does that work? You know, whatever the reason is, it's still very frustrating. But on the bright side, the Libre 2 co doesn't cost any more than the Libre 1, so you're getting this, this Bluetooth add-on just kind of as a free bonus, and that's, that's nice. All right, so next up is the Dexcom G7, and this is the one that I'm personally most excited for. So Dexcom, since they first came to market, has kind of always been the same. They've always had you know a sensor that you put in and then a transmitter that you snap on. And, you know, they, they have made little improvements. You know, they've made the transmitter have a little slimmer profile, 
But, you know, it's kind of always looked the same. You know, the, the improvements that they've made have all been with accuracy, and they've made huge improvements in accuracy. And with the G6, they did improve from a 7-day lifetime to a 10-day lifetime. But with the G7, they're, they're finally breaking that mold, and they're going to release something that looks totally different. And I did a study where I used the G7, and unfortunately, I, I signed a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't talk about what I looked like. But you, we've seen the press images, and it looks impressive. A, a big exciting part of this is that it's just an all-in-one thing. There's not a separate transmitter. It's not two separate prescriptions that you have to deal with and two separate supplies that you have to refill. It's just an all-in-one device. They're also matching the freestyle and that it's going to have a 14 day life. So not only are the sensors going to be one piece, smaller, and have 14 day wear, they're also going to be a lot cheaper. And Dexcom hasn't really come out and said what the pricing is going to be, but I think it's going to be somewhat in line with the, with the freestyle labor. I think it'll be a little bit more, but I think it's going to be pretty close. I don't have any hard evidence to back this up. This is just me speculating. But I think what's going on is that Dexcom is really being pushed by Abbott. And I think that the Dexcom has really like started to see some of their customers switch to the Libre, see a lot of their potential customers go to the Libre. I do want to make something very clear is that Dexcom is not hurting at all. They just released their, their financial statements from the last quarter and it was phenomenal. And they, their stock jumped up 30%. They're not hurting at all, but I do think that they are realizing that they are losing some potential market. And also by having a system like this, it's going to be able to allow them to attack other markets, you know, specifically the type 2 diabetic markets but also like pre-diabetics. I could even see like athletes using this if it's relatively affordable enough, you know, just trying to see what happens to their blood sugar at certain points during their workouts. Speaking about the competition with Abbott, if there are any Libre users out there, um, is this going to be enough to get you to switch to Dexcom? It, how big of a price difference does it need to be for you to stay with the Libre? Is there another reason that you stay with Libre other than the financials? G6 is already more accurate than the Libre 1. You know, Libre 2 isn't going to be more accurate than the Libre 1. We, we suspect that the G7 is going to be a lot more accurate than the G6. So I mean with the G7 being more accurate than the Libre, probably smaller, same life, and actually being like a full-blown CGM and giving you constant readings, I mean how big of a difference is it going to have to be for you to switch? Like, what's the price difference? Does it have to be less than $30 per sensor? What's it going to take to get you guys to switch is basically what I'm asking. And the Dexcom G7 is slated for kind of a limited late 2020 release with a full-blown release in 2021. Next up is Sensionix Eversense system. And for those of you who don't know, this is a system that's drastically different from anything else in the market. They actually, it's a little like pill shaped thing. They actually surgically implant it into your arm and then it's a little like sensor that goes over it um, and then it just wirelessly communicates with the device in your arm to give you readings. And you know, maybe calling it surgery is a little extreme. What they do is they just numb your arm with local anesthetic and then they do a small slit and then they kind of slip the little pill thing under there and then just use stair strips to, to patch it up. And from what I hear and what I've read, it's really a quick and easy and really painless procedure. But at the end of the day, it is still a procedure. You know, it still is an appointment that you need to schedule and it's time that you need to take out of your day. And it's just, it's a lot more intense than the other CGMs where you just insert it into your arm, you know. And then every day you have to charge the, the outside reader for like 15 minutes and change the adhesive. Most people would just do that when they shower. I don't think that's a big deal at all. Uh, this system's great for people who have a hard time with like CGMs like staying on their body, like they have a hard problem with the adhesive, kind of like I did with the Freestyle Libre. It's also great for needle phobics. You know, you only have to deal with that one needle every time it's put in instead of a new needle every week or every 10 days. And this was actually something that I really seriously looked into getting, but the problem was that my insurance just didn't cover it. And even with the Eversense Bridge program, which lowered the actual cost of, of the system to $100, it, uh, just the insertion and the removal were just so high because my insurance just didn't cover it that it just wasn't financially feasible. 
But a big thing for me, and I think this is a big hiccup for a lot of other people, is that the system only lasts for three months, meaning every three months you have to get the sensor removed and reinserted. And I don't know, it's just a lot of hassle for just three months of CGM readings. Their next system is going to improve this a lot. They're calling it the Eversense XL. It's been on the market in Europe for a little bit now. Um, and they're, they're currently in trials right now in the U.S. to get it approved by the FDA. The big change for the XL is that the sensor is now approved to last up to six months versus the current three. And that is just going to make such a huge difference. I was talking about this with my cousin who's also a type 1. And he was like, yeah, I already see my endocrinologist twice a year. So it would just make sense while I'm there. I could just get the sensor removed and reinserted. I think a lot of people are going to feel the same way about it. They're going to see that it lasts for six months and just think that it's so much more worth it. And also, since you're having to get the procedure done half as many times, that means that the costs related to the procedure are also going to be half as much, making the system just so much more financially viable. I think that Eversense is also going to be able to get a lot more uh, insurance coverage, a lot more insurance companies are going to cover it. And I think that we're just going to be seeing a lot more people using this system. And that's, that's pretty exciting because it's going to further increase competition and further motivate companies to continue to innovate and compete on price and functionality. I actually believe in this system so much that I did something crazy. I went ahead and I bought some Sensionic stock, about 120 shares. It was easy because it was only about 88 cents a share. You know, it's, uh, they're, they're not, their financials aren't looking too good right now, but... I, I see this and I see the perspective of it and I think that, that there's a lot of potential there. Now just to be clear, this is something that I did. I'm not advocating that you do this. This is not financial advice. That being said, if I can just do a little plug right here. If you guys do have a stock, diabetes related or not, that you guys have your eye on and you're thinking maybe I want to invest a little bit in this, use my link in the description to sign up for Weeble. If you deposit $100, you get one stock worth up to $250 and a second stock worth up to $1,000. And I get the same for if you guys use my link. Anyways, back to Sensionics. So I was talking back in August to, to the sales rep about it. And, you know, he gave me kind of the in a year-ish uh, is when he's kind of expecting the XL to come to market. And they haven't released any, like, firm guidelines or any firm, like, goals of when they want it to come to market. However, just lining up the trial dates, that they go line up kind of similar to the G7 trial that I've been doing. So I think kind of like a late 2020, early 2021 is when this is going to come to market in the U.S. If everything goes well with the FDA. And then last but not least, let's not forget about the company making the biggest move, and that is Medtronic. They are releasing the same sensor with an updated algorithm. I don't know if you guys picked up on the sarcasm. They are by far making not the biggest moves. In fact, they're making the smallest moves. But yeah, they're they're releasing the Guardian Sensor 3, but they are improving the algorithm. And you know, it is something. This this algorithm is supposed to be a lot more accurate. Um, it's it's gotten approved for non-adjunctive use finally, which means that you can use the the readings from the sensor to make a decision treatment without confirming it with a finger stick. This is getting released in conjunction with the Minimed 780G system, which is slated for a late 2020 release. I assume that it'll just be an over-the-air update rolled out to the Guardian Connect users, if there are any. But yeah, guys, I mean, it, that's pretty much all the positives there are. You know, you're still using the same sensor, which means that you're using the same awkward tape, taping system, which means that it's near impossible to use it on your arm if you're using it by yourself. But the real big negative here is that it's still only going to have seven day sensor life. And once the other systems have updated, that means that their sensor life is literally going to be half of the next shortest one. Now again, improvement is improvement. I don't want to knock it, but at this point with Minimed innovating so little, like why are they even trying? Seriously, they just need to like seriously step up their game or they just need to get out of the market. There's always been a, a need for Minimed sensors. They've communicated with Minimed pumps. However, with the 780G, it's going to integrate with Loop, which means that people using the 780G system are going to have the choice of using Dexcom. Tell me why on earth someone would continue to use the Guardian Sensor 3 when they have access to the Dexcom G7.
I don't know. I don't want to seem too harsh, but if you guys watched my 670G review, which if you haven't, link right here, you guys know that my biggest complaint with that system by far was the Guardian Sensor 3. I don't know. The way that I see it, the Guardian Sensor 3 is at least a generation behind. You know, at best, it's as good as the Dexcom G5. And with all these other companies innovating so much, them just updating the algorithm isn't nowhere near enough. And don't get me wrong, improvement is still improvement. You know, this is going to be good news for people who do use the Guardian sensor. But just at the pace that everyone else is innovating, it's just they're moving at a snail's pace. All the other CGMs have a unique selling point. You know, the Libre has the, the scanning and the low cost. The Dexcom has the continuous readings and the accuracy, especially when it comes to lows. And the Sensionics has the three-month life. What does Minimed have uh, that it works with the Minimed pumps? Even that's going away. And what's interesting is that Minimed is doing that voluntarily. You know, they, they opted in to loop. Now, don't get me wrong. I want the Guardian sensor to be a success. I want it to innovate like crazy and I want people to buy it because it will push all the other sensor manufacturers to do the same. But they're just not doing that and that's so frustrating. I don't know, that's probably enough bashing on Minimed, but the point is that all four sensor manufacturers are going to be improving their products sometime in 2020 or early 2021. And that's that's exciting. I'm super excited for what's down the pipe, pipeline and I think it's gonna be awesome for a lot of people. So me personally, I am most excited about the Dexcom G7. Let me know down in the comments, uh, what sensor are you guys most excited for? If I could give one last final thought, I would say that the biggest loser is actually going to be Abbott. I think that the Dexcom is really gonna steal a lot of market share from the Libre 2, if they price it right, which I'm really hoping that they do. I think that Minimed is going to lose a lot too, but they're right here and Abbott's right here. So Abbott's got a lot more room to fall than Minimed does. So yeah, guys, that's my thoughts. Um, it would mean a lot to me if you guys liked this video. Just hit the like button. And if you're new here, subscribe and check out my other videos. I've got a couple other ones up.